the one Indian state that's had the longest and most consistent presence at the World Economic Forum in Davos was uh, unified Andhra Pradesh, the baton later carried forward by Telangana, now of course at the promenade, an intense competition amongst more than half a dozen Indian states in trying to pull investment to their destinations. And the man trying to hold Telangana and Hyderabad's flag here is uh, Katie Rama Rao. He's a Davos veteran with a packed calendar, managed to squeeze in this conversation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you very much. We're seeing now intense competition, you know, from states like Maharashtra, states like Madhya Pradesh, states like Tamil Nadu, wanting to pull uh, investment away. And Andhra Pradesh earlier and Telangana were the original Davos stars from amongst the Indian states. Sure. Are you beginning to feel the pinch well, and the well, pressure? The first First thing I'll tell you is, uh, I think when you're in Davos in the World Economic Forum, firstly it's about networking, firstly it's about mingling, talking and of course projecting your state in the right light and you know playing to your strengths. But most important thing to understand is, uh, there are countries vying for investment. I think we are all trying to bring investment back to India. Uh, within uh, India, of course, uh, there are 28 different gateways into India, 28 different states. So therefore, uh, each of us, uh, when a company or when an institution is looking at uh, India with intent, I think each of us is trying to attract the attention and telling uh, the world uh, about our strengths, about our uh, you know opportunities, about the opportunities we present. And uh, that's what we've been doing. But the competition is not so much among Indian states as it is among global destinations. So for instance, Hyderabad is not just competing with Maharashtra or Tamil Nadu or some other Telangana is not just competing with other states, but also other countries. So I think it's a good thing for India because stronger the states, stronger the country. Ultimately, we're a union of states. So therefore, I think uh, the more investment that comes to India, the better it is. So you've made a big splash at the World Economic Forum, but people wondering uh, what are the actual tangible takeaways? What is it that you take back to your state from here? Well, Rahul, two things that people need to understand about sales cycles and investment pitches. Um, you know, investment decisions are not made ad hoc or overnight. They take time. You know, you have to build relations, you have to consolidate them, you have to uh, create an intent and understand the other party's perspective as well. So, they don't get uh, these kind of decisions or relationships don't get made overnight. But nonetheless, uh, this time around, uh, we've had significant investments being announced and a significant number of MOUs being signed. But uh, most important thing for uh, uh, people to understand back home is you, when you create a splash, create uh, an interest among all these global investors, and when they start looking at India, the first thing that pops up would be your state. So therefore, it's a process. It's a continuous process. It's a pursuit of... Uh, uh, investments is not something that is, uh, you know, like a knee-jerk reaction. It has to be consistent. You have to be consistently there in the mind space. So Chandra Babu Naidu was the original Davos star. Then uh, you came in and took the baton over from him in some senses. Now I have been seeing Jagan Reddy here as well. He's pushing. And the two young boys from the erstwhile Andhra Pradesh, both trying to pull uh, investment towards their state. Is there a sense of healthy or unhealthy competition? No, no. In fact, like I said, you know, each of us play to our strengths. See, for instance, Andhra is a state with a large coastal line and I wish them the very best in terms of attracting investments in uh, sectors where I possibly cannot compete with them. We are a landlocked state. So therefore, there are areas, there are strengths, there are opportunities in each state which are unique. So therefore, there's no competition as such. But of course, um, each state is vying to build up, uh, uh, you know, its own investment uh, ecosystem and uh, create employment opportunities, etc. So yes, in that sense, maybe yes, but I think uh, on the whole, I think the message that all of us back home in India need to understand is that stronger the states, the stronger the country. So I think it's a great, uh, a great theme that about six Indian states are vying, competing uh, in terms of opportunities, in terms of investments. I think it's a great thing for India. Uh, you've been trying to build Hyderabad and the areas around Hyderabad as a hub for the fourth industrial revolution and Web 3.0. How has that gone? I mean, I, I was at one of your sessions where you were talking about deep learning, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, and people would wonder how much of these ideas are translating into action on the ground. Rahul, in fact, there was a time about two decades ago when India was a back office, you know, when uh, people only looked at India for uh, BPO and KPO kind of work. But now... Uh, after, you know, India's tech prowess has uh, been established, I think what has happened is a uh, lot of uh, interest in all emerging technologies uh, is, is taking uh, the world by storm and India continues to be an epicenter of that. And within India, I think uh, Telangana and Hyderabad are important uh, centers because in Hyderabad, we have, I am not sure if you're familiar, but uh, 
world's largest Amazon campus is in Hyderabad. Second largest campuses of Google, Facebook, Apple, Uber, Salesforce, Micron, Novartis, Medtronic, I can go on, the list is huge, are all in Hyderabad. So goes to show you that uh, the ecosystem is strong. And when the ecosystem is strong, when the tech prowess is already established, I think what is logical extension of that is the new and emerging sectors like Web3, like the ones you mentioned, AI, ML. Now, I think Web3 and crypto, these are two areas where the government of India, of course, has its own viewpoint. There are regulatory uh, concerns. What we are trying to do is basically position ourselves as a hub in all the emerging technologies. For instance, in drones, robotics, cybersecurity, we already have uh, well laid out policies. And most importantly, I think we also have uh, been able to establish a first mover sort of advantage. So I think it... But all the tech majors you mentioned have their India offices. <coughs> but if you look at where... No, no, the that is the second largest base in the world. Wealth creation is happening. Mm -hmm. More of most of these unicorns that pop up either seem to be coming largely from sure. Bengaluru and some now from Gurgaon. Sure. So why uh, I, is it that uh, Hyderabad's not producing in the same frequency and intensity uh, genuine wealth creators who burst into the national limelight? I think I think it'll happen, but uh, what's know, held it back so far? Like how do you? I, w I would say the VC ecosystem is not as strong as it is, say, in uh, the NCR or uh, Bangalore. I think one of the constraints is that. But now we see a lot more interest happening on the 28th of June. In fact, we're launching the world's largest tech incubator in Hyderabad, called as the Tea Hub. I would, of course, invite you. Uh, we are also, again, setting up a specific dedicated uh, floor space for uh, some of the largest VCs in uh, India. So I think it's one of those things where uh, the youngsters are there, the young startups are there, the intent is there, but it has to translate. Yesterday I had a long meeting with Sequoia. Um, I was telling them the same thing, that you know you ought to be there physically to be able to assess and understand uh, the prospects. So I hope uh, it will start turning. Right Does now that we have... you as somebody who is so no, passionate not really. about not really. tech, uh, all things to do with tech, the fact that genuine heroes of the startup ecosystem are actually popping up elsewhere and not on your watch? No, I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. In fact, uh, do I wish for more unicorns from my state? Of course, yes. Does it rankle me? No, because I think each of us in the learning, learning uh, growth curve and learning curve are at different points. You know, Bangalore has always had a first mover advantage. They've started like 15 years before us. So therefore, we are literally playing catch up. And uh, in the last uh, few years and few quarters, we have beaten them on office space absorption. So in the sense, the ecosystem has been expanding. And when it expands, the unicorns will come. They are a byproduct of the ecosystem. They are not uh, uh, the, the epicenter of the ecosystem. So I think I have 800,000 people working in IT now in Hyderabad. My IT exports are growing, you know, better than the national average. So I think it's only a logical, uh, uh, you know, extension eventually that we'll, we have four unicorns now from Hyderabad. We'll have more. In so for a moment, I want to step away from Davos and economics to politics. Uh, for a period, we saw close cooperation between the central government and the KCR government in Telangana, where on several of the key government bills, when they needed support and help, uh, the TRS stepped in uh, to provide that support. Now we're seeing your father, the chief minister, talk about wanting to emerge as a national alternative, wanting to build a third front. Uh, some of these ideas have been spoken of in the past, but they have always been a pipe dream. What's different this time and how serious are you? Well, Raul, firstly, I think, uh, you know, Economics should always take center stage in a place like World Economic Forum. But nevertheless, since you asked me a political question, I'd say this. I think 75 years of Indian independence are uh, being celebrated now. Uh, 15th of August this year, we'll be completing 75 years as an independent nation. But I think time for all of us to introspect. You know, two large uh, national parties, both Congress and BJP, have been given enough opportunities in India by our people. But uh, both of them have really let down the nation because if you think about it, even now, more than the two lakh uh, villages in India, many villages which languish without power, with, uh, without basic necessities like drinking water, or even, for that matter, basic necessities like uh, a proper road. So therefore, we really have, uh, 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 I think, enough uh, uh, time to introspect now and understand why these two national parties have not been able to deliver in 75 years. Just as a quick point of comparison, I'd say in 1987, both India and China were of the same size economically, $470 billion in terms of GDP. But now, if you look at China, they're at $16 trillion and we're still dreaming that pipe dream of $5 trillion. So who has let us down? What, is, what has happened? What, 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 what is wrong with our economic policies? Why did we fail to create more opportunities you know, for a country? So I think time has now come for Indians at large to think about 
a credible alternative and that is one of the things that we want to put as center stage because in the last seven years if Telangana can deliver a portable drinking water connection to each and every home how come the remaining 27 states are not able to do it how come Telangana from a power deficit state can transition into a power surplus state in six years and how come the rest of the country can't so there are certain things that we've done we want to present that model to the rest of the country and ask them to think but if it's very clear over the past few years that the Congress is no longer your principal opposition. When elections happen towards the end of next year, it's the BJP that you'll be up against. And we're seeing uh, whether it's J.P. Nadda or the B uh, Amit Shah declare war on your government. Uh, I have a quote here from the Home Minister which says KCR sitting in his luxurious farmhouse making plans for early elections, thinking he can trick people. I'm asking the party to declare election tomorrow. The BJP is ready. We will defeat you. Our people and youth are aware of your failures. It seems daggers drawn already. Well, this is one government, uh, you know, I call them the NPA government because they have a non-performing non alliance. They've given this country, you know, I think Prime Minister Modi on the 16th of May 2014 said after his victory, Achche din aane wale hain. Aat saal ho gaya. Kaha hai achche din? Kis, kis jaga mein, kis, kis kshetra mein, kis raj mein hai? Th uh, highest unemployment in 45 years, highest inflation in 30 years. That is what Modi has delivered. So for them to talk about incompetence, incapacitated uh, governance is a joke because I think this NPA government has delivered nothing but squat, firstly. Secondly, Telangana as a government, Telangana as a state has done exceptionally well. Our per capita in 2014 was 1,24,000 rupees. Today it's 278,000 rupees. Our GSDP back in 2014 was 5,6,000 crores. Today it's 11.55 lakh crores. So talk about wealth creation, employment creation, talk about completing the world's largest lift irrigation project in uh, breakneck speed uh, without zero support from, uh, with, uh, with zero support from central government. We've done that all. So in terms of delivery, in terms of performance, if he wants to talk, let him talk. What, is, what have they given to this country other than polarized nonsense? Uh, halals and hijabs and Hanuman chalisas. Is that, is that what we need to be talking about? Is that what should take the center stage in this country today? 75 years of independence. You have nothing to talk about in terms of delivery. You have nothing to show in terms of delivery, other than inflation, other than unemployment. So what do you do? But the BJP... AD, attention diversion. That is what, unfortunately, has, has been happening. And in Telangana, they have lost deposits in 108 seats out of 119 last time. This time they might lose it in 100. So if you call that a great achievement, so be it. First class cut.